En question. Please be seated. Le président, veuillez vous asseoir. En nouveau The court is now in session. Je déclare l'audience ouverte. Today, the chamber will hear the testimony of Mr. Richard Dutman through a video conferencing uh, facility from the United States. And Ms. Jie Siu Huang, could you report the attendance of the parties and individuals to today's proceedings? Greffier. Mr. President, for today's proceedings, all parties to this case are present. As for Nun Chi, he is present in the holding cell downstairs as he requests to waive his right to be present in the courtroom. The witness who is to testify today, that is Mr. Richard Dutman from a video conference in the United States, confirms that through his ability, he has no relationship by blood or by law to any of the two accused, Nun Chi and Kiyo Samporn, nor through any of the civil parties admitted in this case. The witness will take oath before the chamber. During his testimony, there is Mr. Todd Lowell, who is an assistant United States attorney, and Mr. Jason Barrett, a counsel for Mr. Dutman. The AV unit informs the chamber that the video conference has been set up and ready to be at Used, and the witness is also ready. President, thank you, Ms. Jie Si Huang. The chamber now decides on the request by Nun Chia. The chamber has received a waiver from Nun Chia dated 31st March 2015, says the president. He confirms that due to his poor health condition, that he's had neck, back pain, and that he cannot sit for long, and in order to effectively participate in the future hearings, he requests to waive his right to participate in and be present at the 30 March 2015 hearing. He has been informed by his counsel about the consequence of this waiver that in no way it can be construed as a waiver of his rights to be tried fairly or to challenge evidence presented or admitted to this court at any time during this trial. Having seen the medical report by the duty doctor for the accused at ECCC, dated 30 March 2015, who notes that the health condition of Nguyen Chi is that he has a chronic back pain and dizziness and that he cannot sit there for long and recommends that the chamber shall grant him his request so that he can follow the proceedings remotely from a holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to Rule 815 of the ECCC internal rules, the chamber grants Nguyen Chi's request to follow the proceedings remotely from a holding cell downstairs via an audio-visual means for today's proceedings as he waives his direct presence in the courtroom. The AB unit is instructed to link the proceedings to the room downstairs so that Nguyen Chi can participate in and follow today's proceedings remotely. President. And good morning, Mr. Todd Lowell. Monsieur Todd Lowell, bonjour. Good morning. Good morning. Bonjour. Monsieur Dedman, bonjour. 
local recharge. The president. And good adieu, Mr. Richard Dutman, Et the person on the screen. À vous. I didn't understand that. Richard Edman, je n'ai pas compris. Le président. Allow the chamber first to ask to Mr. Todd Lowell, who is the assistant United States attorney, and then your counsel, Mr. Jason Barrett, so that the audience can understand about their presence with you. Good morning, this is Todd Lowell. I'm an assistant United States attorney with the Department of Justice for the United States for the District of Maine. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to put question to the other person. Could you please uh, tell the chamber your name? My name is Jason Barrett, uh, Richard Dudman's attorney, the law firm of Eaton Peabody in Bangor, Maine. Thank you. Je vous remercie. The chamber would like to inform the parties and the audience that uh, next to Mr. Richard Dutman, there are two councils, Mr. Todd Lowell, the assistant United States attorney, and Mr. Jason Barrett, counsel for Mr. Dutman. The two councils will sit along Mr. Dutman during his testimony before this chamber. And the chamber, uh, thank you, Mr. Todd Lowell and Mr. Jason Barrett. Souhaite remercier ces deux personnes. Réponse. Merci. And le président. Mr. Witness, Monsieur could you please pour tell the chamber dire à la your chambre, full name? Quel est votre nom complet? I'm Richard Dudman. Je me nomme Richard Dudman. Thank you, Mr. Richard Dudman. Can you tell the chamber also your date of birth? I didn't understand the question. When were you born? I was born May 3rd, 1918. 1918. 96 years ago. Le Président. Thank you, Mr. Dutman. Where is your current address? Quelle est votre adresse actuelle? My present address is in Ellsworth, Maine. The street is 7070 Surrey Road, S-U-R-R-Y Road, in Ellsworth, E-L-L-S-W-O-R-T-H, Maine, 04605. Le président. Mr. Richard Dutman, Richard could you please Dutman, uh, repeat your present address as the interpreter cannot hear it clearly? Pas été clairement. I didn't understand that. 
Uh, current address. My current address is what I just told you. I'll tell you again. It's number 70 Surrey Road, spelled S-U-R-R-Y Road, in the city of Ellsworth, E-L-L-S-W-O-R-T-H, Maine, 04605. Thank you, Mr. Richard Dutman. And what is your current occupation? I am a freelance writer. Self-employed writer. Thank you, Mr. Richard Dutman. And what is your nationality? My nationality? I'm an American, United States of America citizen. Thank you, Mr. Dutman. As a witness before this chamber, you need to take an oath according to your religion or belief. Can you do that? Uh, he's asking for the oath. Can you take an oath? I could take. Uh, I could take an oath. Shall I do it now? Uh, thank you, and actually the Grafchi uh, will proceed with taking an oath for you. And Mr. Roger Phillips, could you please proceed with the oath taking of this witness? Mr. Dudman, please repeat the entire oath after me. I solemnly declare that I will speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I solemnly declare that I will speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dudman. Le président, merci, Monsieur Dudman. The greffier made an oral report that, to your best knowledge, you do not have any latency by blood or by law to any of the true accused, non chi or accused and pawn, or any of the civil parties admitted in this court. Is that information correct? That is correct. Thank you. And now the Chamber would like to inform you of your rights and obligations as a witness regarding your rights. As a witness in the proceedings before the Chamber, you may refuse to respond to any question or to make any comment which may incriminate you. And for the obligations, as a witness in the proceedings before the chamber, you must respond to any questions by the bench or relevant parties. And you must tell the truth that you have known heard, seen, remembered, experienced, or observed directly regarding events or occurrences relevant to the questions that the bench or parties pose to you. And Mr. Dutman 
Had you been interviewed by investigators of the Office of the Co-Investigating Judges of the ECCC? <laughs> I didn't get the question. Monsieur Dodman, je n'ai pas compris la question. Le Président. Uh, allow me to put the questions to you again. Je répète à uh, Mr. Dodman, Dodman, had you provided any interview to the investigators of the Office of the Co-Investigating Judges of the ECCC? Uh, no. Le président. Thank you. Je vous remercie. And Mr. Richard Dutman, during your testimony, Dutman, if you need to take a si break, pause, please uh, feel free to inform the chamber so that uh, we will allow you to rest. Pour que nous vous puissions Do you understand? Maybe, maybe about 45 minutes from now, something like that would be fine for, my, for me. Thank you. And the chamber now hand the floor to the Nunchi's defense to put questions to this witness before other parties. And the Nunchi's defense has one hour and 20 minutes to put questions to this witness. Do you have the floor? Um. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. Good morning, Council. Um, Mr. President, before I start, I would like to tell you that the QSAMPAN team uh, generously uh, allots some time of them to us. So I would be hoping that I could ask questions to the witness uh, for about two hours and maybe a bit. Um, good evening, uh, Mr. Dutman. Met, Monsieur Dutman, bonsoir. Good evening. Réponse, bonsoir. Um, I am. Uh, my name is uh, Victor Koppe. Koppe. I am the international uh, co-counsel for New and Chia, and I would like uh, to ask you some questions. Et j'aimerais vous poser un certain nombre de questions. Um, did, did, Mr. Mr. Dutman, I would like to ask you some questions. Good Monsieur evening. Dutman, did you hear me? Vous entendu, vous poser des questions. I can hear you, yes. Speak uh, very distinctly Dutman, and rather Dutman, slowly, if you please. Entendre, vous plaît, très I, I, très I most certainly will, uh, Mr. Dutman. Je ferai de mon mieux. Um, Mr. Dutman, uh, please allow me... Um, for reasons of time, to very uh, briefly uh, summarize uh, your CV, um, and if I make a mistake, uh, please uh, correct me. As already uh, mentioned by you, um, you were born in uh, 1918, I think uh, in a month of the year when the First World War was still raging. Um, I think you graduated at uh, Stanford University in 1940, uh, majoring in uh, journalism. Um, I believe you were also a, a Navy officer in the Second World War. Um, I believe you started working as a, a journalist in 1949. 
and that you did uh, that for uh, 31 uh, consecutive years. I believe, uh, Mr. Dutman, that you have, for instance, covered um, the revolution in Cuba, uh, the assassination of uh, President Kennedy, uh, Watergate, uh, I believe the war in Vietnam, and many other conflicts in the world. Uh, in 1970, I think you spent 40 days in uh, captivity of the Viet Cong uh, in Cambodia. And in 1993, you received uh, the George Polk Lifetime Achievement Award, which I believe is a prestigious um, American Journalism Award. Um, Mr. Dutman, please allow me to say that I'm, I'm very impressed uh, with your credentials and that I'm absolutely thrilled that at the age of almost uh, 97 years old uh, you are still willing and able uh, to testify as a witness uh, before this tribunal. Um, now, Mr. Dutman, in this very, very brief summary uh, made for purposes of your testimony, uh, is this summary an adequate summary or would you like uh, to add something? I think that covers my career. Actually, I started as a reporter sometime before 1949. Uh, but I, I, aside from that, I think you have accurately summarized my career. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Dutman. I have a few uh, short follow-up questions uh, regarding your CV. Um, would you be able to tell the trial chamber why it was uh, that you were awarded um, the journalism award that I mentioned earlier? I don't know. It was their own judgment. Um, I understand, but I'm sure that um, when you were awarded this, um, or given this award, that they that you were told as to what the reasons were that you received this uh, journalism award. I said I was a good reporter. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Dutman. Um, my next question would be, um, could you describe in some detail uh, your work uh, as a journalist uh, when it comes to uh, covering the U.S. involvement in Vietnam and Cambodia? in the 70s of the last century. My editor sent me to repeatedly to Vietnam and Cambodia on many trips and I stayed for periods of a few weeks usually and I wrote many articles about the various conflicts. Do you remember how often you were in Indochina in the 70s? I Oh, maybe a dozen times. Réponse, peut-être une douzaine de fois. Mr. Dutman, um, could you tell us some more about uh, your 40 days captivity uh, by members of the Viet Cong in Cambodia? And I, and I don't mean uh, details about the 40 days, because I read your very interesting uh, book on this, uh, but how it impacted uh, your understanding and knowledge of uh, the civil war in Cambodia between 1970 and 1975. 
entre le Cambodge dans les années 70. I'm not, I don't understand your question. Monsieur Dudman, je n'ai pas compris votre question. Um, uh, you you were held, as I mentioned earlier, in captivity in, in, in Cambodia, 40 days um, by members of um, the National Liberation Front of South Vietnam, the Viet Cong. Um, you wrote a book about this. Um, would you be able to tell us some more about how uh, these days of captivity affected uh, your views on the then raging civil war uh, within Cambodia? Uh, I would summarize it by saying that I learned firsthand that the Viet Cong people who held me were uh, 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 actually friendly and helpful. And uh, I saw them as uh, individuals rather than some kind of faceless enemy. Um, and did it somehow change your understanding uh, of the civil war uh, that was going on in Cambodia itself? Or uh, is that difficult to, to say after so many years? I don't think I can remember how my thinking changed, if it did. Um, thank you, Mr. Dudman. Um, following up on this question, at the time, I mean in the 70s and in uh, uh, subsequent years, uh, did you consider yourself to be uh, an expert on uh, Vietnam and Vietnamese de foreign policy? An expert? Never, never really an expert. I was always learning. Um, correct, but did you have um, relatively more expertise when it comes to Certes, speaking about Vietnamese foreign policy than uh, other journalists, or would that be difficult for you to, um, uh, to assess? I covered the State Department. I covered Réponse. policy speeches and, and actions, and I... I don't know what, how to answer you beyond that. Um, I, I realize it's, it's a bit difficult question, so uh, Mr. Dutton, allow me to move on. And um, allow me to move on to uh, the year uh, 1990, um, almost, or actually uh, 25 years ago. Um, and I would like to go uh, to that year, Mr. Dutman, because on the 17th of August 1990, uh, you wrote uh, an op-ed, an article, uh, to the New York Times. Um, do you remember having written uh, that article in the New York Times? I did not remember it, but uh, the, the document was produced for me tonight, and I have it before me, but I have not reread it. Um, would it um, would it be an idea to give you a few minutes to have a look at it, or do you prefer me to ask questions about it um, so that you can reply to it off the cough, so to speak? If you want to give me a moment, I will read it right now to myself. I'll do that. Uh, yes, please do, uh, Mr. Dutton. Yeah.
Um, while the witness is reading, Mr. President, um, I'm talking Maître about uh, document E. 307 slash 5.2.16 ERN English 01002091 and French ERN 01072647 and Khmer ERN 01 Zero seven seven zero nine one up until uh, nine four. Jusqu'à neuf quatre. I have finished reading the article. Mr. Dudman, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Dudman. Um, I realize I'm asking you something about uh, almost uh, 25 years ago. Uh, but do you recall uh, what prompted you to write this op-ed in the New York Times? Do you recall writing the article? Uh, yes, do you remember what, what prompted you to, to write that op I don't, I didn't get the questions. Um, my question was, do you recall um, the reason you wrote this article, what prompted you uh, to write this op Yes, I do. Monsieur Dudman, oui, je m'en souviens. Um, could you please tell us, Mr. Dudman? Pourriez-vous nous dire alors pourquoi? Uh, I, I had visited Réponse. Cambodia. I had been told by Cambodge, many people at, at home and elsewhere I, what I should think about it. Aux états -Unis et ailleurs, As a reporter, I wanted to see for myself and make my own decision and not just write what I was told I should look for. I looked for uh, signs of uh, brutality. I found them. I looked for signs of uh, mass uh, extermination of people. I, I heard, I, I was told of some incidents, but I, not enough for me to judge, uh, to make a, a wholesale judgment.
about mass murder. I, I don't know if you understand it, but a newspaper man always must maintain his skepticism about what he's told and to write what he sees and can learn. I did my best, and I don't know that I would write the same thing today, but that's what the way it struck me then, uh, and I, that's, that's about all I can tell you about it. Um, in general terms, would you be able to say whether today um, you would still stand by uh, the content of this uh, article, this op-ed? Since then, I have uh, read a great deal about what went on under the Pol Pot regime, and I've talked to many sources about it, too, and I, 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 I doubt if I would have written uh, uh, this story knowing what I know today. But I must say the, uh, the headline, I think, goes a little farther than the story. Not much, but a little. I don't write my own headlines. Uh, and uh, that was the way I saw it at that time. Um, allow me, Mr. Dutman, to, to read uh, one or two excerpts uh, from uh, your article. And uh, I would like to ask a few follow-up questions on exactly uh, what you meant when you wrote it. Um, yes. Uh, Mr. President, I think I just mentioned uh, the, the ERN, so I, I, I hope everyone has it in front of him or her. Um, so the paragraph I would like to read to you is in the second um, column, Mr. Dutman, and it reads as follows. Um, before we abandon uh, the opposition coalition, Avant we should take another look at the man we love to hate, at the conventional wisdom. Uh, oh, yeah. You have it? Yeah. At the conventional wisdom that Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge are irrational fan fanatics who practiced deliberate genocide, slaughtered more than one million Cambodians, and wrecked the Cambodian society and economy. Uh, the evidence for these fixed beliefs consists mainly of poignant, though statistically inconclusive, uh, anecdotes and extrapolations from accounts of mass execution in a few villages. It comes mostly from those with an interest in blackening the name of the Khmer Rouge, from Cambodian refugees, re refugees largely the middle and upper class victims of the Pol Pot Revolution, and from the Vietnamese who long ago annexed much of Cambodia. Saigon was once a Cambodian city, and now covet the rest. Hanoi knows the public relations game. Pol Pot and his hermit-like regime, on the other hand, have made uh, almost uh, no effort to tell their story. Um, I just got a sign that I should slow down a little bit for translation, uh, Mr. Dutman. Um, my, my first question to you would be whether you remember what made you write that uh, statistically inconclusive anecdotes uh, coming mostly from those with an interest in blackening the name of the Khmer Rouge. Do you remember what prompted you to write this? I, I don't recall uh, 
the exact conversations I had, but I do remember uh, being told such things, and I, I said, as you quoted, that we should take another look. I think we have taken another look, and the preponderance of uh, the evidence supports the fact that there was a, a, a mass murdering going on. So uh, at the time, I was writing a normally skeptical reporter's view of what he could find out. And I, I, I know more things now than I did then. One final question on this specific paragraph, uh, Mr. Duncan. Um, what did you mean when you wrote uh, that Hanoi knows the public relations game and that Pol Pot made almost no effort uh, to tell their story? I don't remember what I, uh, uh, where I got that in that uh, 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 statement. Uh, I, I don't really recall. I uh, that I, I I can't deny I wrote it, but I don't remember why I wrote that. Um, thank you, Mr. Dutman. Now, um, there is a second passage that I would like to read to you um, and then ask you if that's all right with you some questions. Um, and that is a paragraph that actually reflects um, your visit in 1978 uh, to the Democratic Campuchia. And that is um, in the fourth column of your article, uh, which starts with the word uh, still. Um, allow me, uh, Mr. Dutman, if you have found the specific Dutman, passage si to read it to you. Passage, still, the information I had received pourtant, in advance was mostly misleading. Observing many hundreds of Cambodians, too many I judged to have been arranged for my benefit, I saw a generally healthy population, a normal demographic mix of men, women and children, including babies in arms, and yes, many nursing mothers. I looked in vain for distended bellies and dull brownish hair. Working hours, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. p.m. were not unreasonable for the harvest season. A natural rubber factory, a pharmaceutical plant, and a textile mill appeared to be operating efficiently. Rice exports had resumed on a modest scale, as confirmed later by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Um, Mr. Dutman, do you recall whether uh, before writing this um, op-ed in the New York Times in 1990 uh, that you reread your report, your 15 January 1979 uh, report um, on your visit in 78. Did you reread that before your op-ed? I, I didn't get that question. Will you rephrase it? Um, of, of course, by all means. Um, you, I just quoted you in your op-ed writing about um, your visit in 78. Do you recall that before you wrote uh, this op-ed, you revisited or reviewed your own earlier report from 1979? 
I don't recall uh, relating this to the what I'd seen before. Those parag that paragraph you read, starting still. Um, I can remember writing that, and I can remember uh, looking for those signs of uh, uh, abuse of the population, and I, uh, I wrote what I saw. Um, maybe I'll, I'll ask a different follow-up question. Do you feel that at the time that you wrote your article in the New York Times that um, your 79 report was still uh, an accurate reflection of what you had seen and experienced uh, during your trip to DK Democratic Compitia in 78? I really don't get the point of your question. My, my question, I suppose, uh, goes to uh, understanding whether when you wrote your article in 1990 uh, and quoted your own experiences uh, from that visit, that that was still uh, an accurate reflection of what you had experienced yourself. In other words, um, did you revisit your uh, 1979 report when you wrote this New York Times article in 1990? avant de lire, de rédiger cet article en 1990. There were two separate experiences. Monsieur Dudman, il s'agissait de deux distinctes. I was physically threatened and could easily have been killed. J'aurais pu être tué très facilement. In 1990, I was walking the streets looking for evidence that would support or uh, call into question what I've been told to look for in Cambodia. I wrote what I saw. In both cases, I wrote what, I, what happened. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know if that answers your question, but that's my answer. I'm, I'm, I'm only trying to, f to find out that um, 11 years after your trip, you saw things differently in relation to your trip, whether you had somehow changed your mind si um, vous avez changé about your trip in 1978, or whether in 1990 uh, that was still reflecting your experience. Si that, that's, that was the reason of my question. Um, I didn't see a, uh, I didn't see a conflict between the two. I wrote in both cases I wrote what I experienced and what I saw. Um, thank you, Mr. Dutman. A another reason um, I'm asking you this question because is because I um, asked your companion on the trip, Elizabeth Becker, also some questions um, on your OPET. And, um, she had read your op-ed and um, she gave testimony, and I, I'm happy to quote the literal words, uh, which seemed to be very critical about this article, um, basically saying that she didn't agree with what you had written. Um, and um, maybe if you allow me, Mr. Dutman, I would read some of her uh, answers, and then I would like to ask your reaction. Um, so I asked um, Elizabeth Becker uh, whether she had any, and I'm referring, Mr. Um, President, to E1 
slash 260. That is a testimony of uh, 10 February uh, 2015 uh, between uh, 13.51 and, and 2 o'clock. And um, I asked her, do you have any general comments on that op-ed that uh, Mr. Dutton wrote? She says, I disagree with it. Uh, by 1990, when it was published, all of the tool slang uh, records had been, uh, tool slang had been open for years. The evidence was clear and Dick had retired. He'd never gone back to Cambodia since December 78. And I like and admire Dick, and I was sorry to see that he wrote that because the evidence was the contrary. And some further in her testimony, Mr. Dutman, Elizabeth Becker testified that his ideas are entirely out of date, that he doesn't even mention all of the archives that were uncovered after the Vietnamese invasion, that this was, um, there was no question, the reason we're having this trial now is the evidence is overwhelming. And as I said, I really like Dick and I admire him and I'm very sorry to see he wrote that because the evidence this was an incompetent murderous regime. Um, that is Mr. Dutman on one part of your testimony. On the other part, when you were saying um, the things on your uh, visit, she testified that is at 1357, uh, Mr. President, Ensuite, same day. This is what we call single source reporting. Voilà that when you go simply to a country and you allow government officials to make your itinerary, to define who you talk to and who you do you not talk to, and do not allow you any freedom at all. That is single sourcing. And that is not complete journalism, and I disagree, disagree as you know. Mr. Dutman, I apologize for the long uh, quotes, um, but I would simply like to give you an opportunity to react to Elizabeth Becker's criticism uh, of your article in the New York Times. What should I say? Who likes to be criticized? Nobody. I wrote what I saw on that trip, and I, I was writing normal journalistic uh, skepticism and looking for myself. And I wrote what I saw, and I, I resent it when I'm told I was doing single source reporting. I don't know what single source she's talking about. <coughs> oh, I, I'm, I'm not sure either, Mr. Dutman, but that, that's her testimony. But um, if, if I would sum it up in one sentence, it seems that um, one of her main criticisms is that you had not in fact seen Cambodia before and that you weren't in a position to compare what you saw with uh, earlier experiences. What would be your reaction to that? I didn't get the, that question. Um, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I will rephrase. It seems that Elizabeth Becker was criticizing you here in this court um, while saying that you hadn't seen Cambodia before your visit in 1978 and that you weren't in a position to make any comparisons as to the food situation, uh, the general health situation, as opposed to her who had visited Cambodia before. Well, she's been in Cambodia a lot more than I have, so she has a longer perspective. I, I, I had two 
main experiences there, well, three, I guess, being captured, being threatened in 78, le fait été et and uh, revisiting it and seeing for myself. And I, in each case, I wrote what I saw and what I experienced. I, um, is, is there anything in your report of 79, Mr. Dutman, that you would now consider as being too uh, positive uh, or too uncritical uh, as to what you have seen and experienced on your trip? Yes. Uh, for uh, everything I've I read since, and everything uh, and sources that I have consulted, I, I think th there was a, a genocide uh, under the Pol Pot regime. So I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't now write this article. Ce qui veut dire qu'à présent, je ne rédigerai plus ce um, genre d'article. I, I apologize for my unclarity, but I was Maître now Copé, referring to your 79 report. Pardonnez-moi, je n'ai peut-être pas été suffisamment clair. Je parlais de votre rapport oh, de 1979. Oh, I see I have to uh, break because ah, of time. Je crois que um, nous devons faire Mr. une petite pause. Je vais uh, rester là pour l'instant, Monsieur Dudman. Bah. Le Président. President. Thank you, Mr. Richard Dutman. Merci, Monsieur we Dutman. have a break now for, for 10 minutes, and we will resume our session again. So we will uh, resume at 10 Nous past 9, Mr. Dutman. So you can uh, rest, and we we'll see you again in 10 minutes. Vous pouvez vous reposer quelques minutes. Nous reprenons dans 10 minutes. Something up here.